a very stormy day here in Indiana. They said we have possibilities of tornadoes. Let's hope not. Olive just chased this big giant cat that was out there. <laughs> she didn't bark or growl or anything because she's used to having cats around her because our daughter Izzy owns a, um, what do you call those giant cats? Mangoon? Mangoon? Something like that? <clears throat> so, I think she just wanted to play with it. But I could tell it's going to storm. Look at the weather and the birds like are all a little crazy today. So anyway, I'm going to do the worms early today because I'm always afraid we'll lose power. And um, then I can't see in the wormery. Hi, Nina. She's so cute. So my tub's here that I keep in the spare room. I don't keep the light on in here. I keep these worms in the dark. And I never have a problem with them. They never escape. They never want to escape. They just like their home. <laughs> they want to stay here. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go check the breeder bins and see if they're dry enough today. Today's Friday to do the harvesting um, and to do the resetting. If not, I'm going to just have to... You see, I divide my day into twos. Friday, I usually come down here to the wormery and work on the wormery and reset bins and you know get things ready for shipping if I have to like fluffing things up to dry it out or I go upstairs and I clean my whole house Saturday usually I like to go upstairs and do that um, but again it all depends on the dryness of the bins whether I'm going to be able to work down here or not. Or today might be the day that I just do upstairs. And then Saturday I come down here to the warmer. Today the weather's crazy in Indiana, guys. It's wild. They said we might have tornadoes. Um, when the weather's like that, I try to keep the, um, the noise in the house down to a minimum. So if that tornado siren goes off, I can hear it. Because sometimes, you know, I can't hear it. <laughs> this seems dry. Well... Oh, look at them. Hi, guys. Look at that glutellum on that one. Look at that. Probably about to lay a cocoon up it. Let's turn you over. So I think I can do some of these today. Let's see this one. Yeah, I could do some of these today. There's so many cocoons in these things. All right. So I guess upstairs... I'm cleaning house tomorrow. Let's get these guys done. So, I'll do my best to bring you with me as I do this. And then I'll upload this video, I don't know when. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Alright, so we're ready to go. We're going to sift these breeders out. And we're going to reset them on the wall here. And then all the cocoons and babies are going to go here. And if I run out of room here, I always put them in my overflow tubs over there, which are the colonies. Oh my gosh, guys, I was going crazy looking for the remotes. And look what Joe did. How sweet. Isn't this the cutest little recycling container? He put my remotes here. It reminds me of a flow-through bin. <laughs> if you cut it open here, then you put the worms and castings and all the stuff through here and it just flows down. So isn't that sweet? There they are. So I don't know what I'm going to watch on YouTube today. Let's see. It's dark and stormy out, so I'm in the mood for something haunted. Or Monster Quest, Proof of Seven Foot Wild Man. You know, that's got to be about Bigfoot. So I think I'm going to watch that in between recording. <laughs> oh, I've had a lot of coffee today, guys. All right. So I don't know if I'm going to bring you for this entire process. I mean, I think this video will be very long. And I'm not even sure, like, who's going to watch the whole thing. I hope people do, but, you know, I don't want to bore you either. So, look at that. So now I have an empty tub here. And I just start rocking on this thing. This sifter is from Mimi's Worms, by the way. Someone builds them for her. And uh, I talked to her yesterday on the phone for about an hour or so. Sometimes we just catch up, you know. And I also talked a little bit through email with um, 
Gitano from North uh, East Worms. I talk to everybody, guys. Sometimes I go like this because it seems to all congregate this way. Now this, for the most part, gets like cocoons and babies and young worms, but it's you're never going to get everything out of here and it, it's never going to be perfect. So when I first started farming years ago, um, I struggled to get every single cocoon, every little baby, every little... And it was so frustrating because I couldn't get them all. And I was there for hours. I'm saying, I'm talking hours. It was like, wow. So you see, look. I can't see them now because they're blended. But these are worms from one bin, one breeder bin. So what I'll do with this is I can take them all and just leave them in here and reset it. Or if I want to grow my wall, I'll take this and I'll divide it in half. And I'll put this in the spin, and I'll put this in the new bin. And that's how you divide the wall. But right now, I'm just going to harvest them and get them all in here. And then I'll deal with what I'm going to do. Because that's how, that's how it's done. And again, you do the wall according to how much space you got and, you know, how much uh, time you have. So let's get another bin. Let's get another bin. This one's kind of still wet. I like this uh, newer peat moss I'm using. It's uh, It creates no dust. The other one was creating a lot of dust. And um, uh, I was, <laughs> if I didn't wear a mask, I would have like tight, tight lung all day. And that was not good. So let me bring you in closer so you can see this. There you go. See, there's still some pieces, but we're going to try anyway. I go slow at first just to see. And yeah, I see babies falling. Now this sifter, I do have another size. That's a one eighth for cocoons. If I really wanted only cocoons, I would use that. Um, and I have used it. But right now for this purpose, I'm just still gonna... If I go with this. Okay. Normally I have this on a different size tub, but right now it's occupied, so I just have to use what I have. That's okay. I might have to do the light method with some of these. But look, as you can see, substrate bedding full of cocoons and youngsters and all the microbial life and just everything in here and it feels so fluffy that's a good sign look at that so i'm gonna just put this one here yeah, this one's definitely too wet you can tell because look how it kind of sticks you know me I'm determined and when I'm determined to get something done I do it <laughs> that's just how I am <laughs> let me put less in there and see how that works
So I've been checking the tracking on some of the orders. I ship Tuesday and I noticed that some some have arrived and some have not yet. So a lot of them should arrive by today. See what it's like when it's so much drier? It's just a lot easier. It's easier to have it up like this, but I'm losing some stuff on the floor. Worm farming is one of the dirtiest careers you will ever have. Ever. <laughs> but very rewarding. There's always one that wants to hitch a ride. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Just incredible life in here. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, there's still something in here. Sometimes I wear gloves. Sometimes I just don't feel like it, honestly. <laughs> I think I'm going to sift them more this way. So they're not so close to the edge. Oh, some of them are falling through. Even big ones, look, see? You can't get them all. You're just not going to. And that's okay. Okay. So I have no music on today because today I'm, you know, filming a little bit with y'all. So today is my daughter, Laura, her birthday. She turns 25 today. I know I can't believe it. I remember when I had her. She was chunky and her eyes were closed because she was so chunky. She looked Asian, loved it. Everyone loved the amount of hair that that girl had when she was born. <laughs> but Laura, you know, the night she was born, um, I know other moms can attest to this. When your baby's born, you just, you want privacy and you don't like anyone touching them. And that's how I felt. And <laughs> a storm came and Laura was crying in the nursery at the hospital. And I looked at Joe and I said, I'm leaving. He's like, what do you mean you're leaving? You just gave birth last night. I said, I don't care. I am leaving. Get the papers. So he ran and got the papers and, um, you know, I signed all the release forms and everything. And under this huge storm in New Jersey... I wrapped up my baby and I took her home. I just felt more comfortable at home. And um, yeah, that's what I did. I didn't care what the weather was like. By the, you know, she was my third child. So by then I kind of knew what I was doing. And um, I don't know, I just felt like being home. You know how you, the comforts of home. 
So that was 25 years ago. So if you're watching this, Laura, happy birthday, love. Of course, <clears throat> on her Facebook page, I put a picture of Bigfoot holding some balloons. You know, I mean, that's tradition. Bigfoot has birthday too. <laughs> So on my website, guys, if whoever's still around, this video is probably going to be long. <laughs> I started putting my dehydrated sourdough starter on there. So if anyone's interested in baking their own bread, you can. The dehydrated sourdough, um, I have one of them there that's from Italy. And it took me a bit to develop it, but um, I did it. And for those of you that um, are new around here, I used to be a... Um, a head cook in um, a jail that was like run like a prison. So, <laughs> but, um, and I cooked a lot of meals and, you know, I had a lot of fun and it was a, it was very rewarding. So um, I've been cooking since I was like 10 years old. You know, my mom taught me. So baking bread is like one of the most rewarding things you can do. And the smell in your house is unbelievable. Plus, it's a good way to use some of your garden things in your bread, like uh, rosemary bread, dry rosemary to bread, and then you put a little olive oil in there. Oh, wow. So if you want dehydrated sourdough, it's on my website. And I don't mail out some little amount like this. I see on Etsy people mailing amounts like this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm also starting to put on my website my knitted hats that are going to have a Bigfoot logo on them because I love Bigfoot so much and I need something Bigfoot. So if you want a hat for coming up this uh, autumn for the winter gardening or winter farming outside, um, they're all made by me. And all the proceeds from my website, they pay for my website and they help pay for the wormery, including, you know, my little YouTube money once a month. So, gotta do what you can to keep this wormery going. I told you building a business takes two to four years. And you gotta know how to multiply these guys or you're always gonna be in the hole. But I'm no stranger to hard work, so I'm always... Um, putting in the effort. All right, guys. I just heard a big thunder. All right. I'll bring you back when I have a lot of this done. Oh, wow. You hear the thunder? I lost my signal on my TV. I think the thunder took it out, the electricity, the storm, whatever. So you see this? I can't sift it. It's too wet. So I'm going to have to put it back in the tub here and put it back on the wall and just let it dry out for a little bit. Sometimes you just, you just can't do it. It's heavy too. But I gave it a try just in case. Yeah, look. Classic example of castings being too wet. Bedding being too wet. You can say bedding, castings, it's all like, it's all the same thing, sort of. Now I have to go like this and clean it off. Yeah, this is definitely too wet. So I'm just gonna put it back on the wall and keep fluffing it up and keep letting it dry out. Yeah, I have no TV now. Storm. So here's my wall. I start with one section at a time. So I already filled these up here. So now I'm going to continue over here. So this is the next one. I put it here. You see, there's still some worms there. Sometimes I wait to 
worms to go down and I take off all the bedding and then I weigh them. But lately, I've just been taking clumps of it from the bottom because the worms go down and I've just been doing this. It's a lot easier for me. So this will have more bedding added to it. So then I put it back just so I can know that I have that one done. Then I bring the next one and I come on this side because they go down, remember? So you got to like go get them. I'll say that's about a quarter pound of worms. And they're going to still keep working on all this. So this is how this rotation works, you know. Um, these will be reset. So then next time I'll go down to these and I'll work my way up. And it's the same thing with this one. You see this one I meant on harvesting today, but as you saw, it was just too wet. So I just leave it. Then see, I got old dates on everything. So then I start with this one because this is the next one in line. And then that one, and I work on my way to all the empty bins. You see, these had all intentions to be harvested today, but they're still too dry, and I just can't do it. So I work my way up. Then here, I work my way down. And that's how this breeder wall gets rotated. So we already did those, and these are not harvesting today because they're too wet. So let's just do this one. You know, it just takes some, um, it just takes practice, guys. And I'm showing you things that, you know, no one would give me a straight answer on, honestly, when I would ask. It was extremely frustrating. And I thought, why? They don't want to tell me for a reason because they don't want me learning or something. I don't really know. I don't care. Um, I just realized that I had to figure it out myself. And then I told Joe, when I figure it out, I'm going to show people how to do it. And that's what I've been doing. So I hope um, you all watch my entire videos because this is um, like very valuable information if you want to be a worm farmer. I mean, if you don't, um, if you just want to use them for composting, then at least you're learning something. <laughs> so this is it. So the next thing I'll do when I have these all set is I'll go make fresh bedding in a big tub and I'll supplement each bin. And you can reuse their bedding at least three times. I heard some people use it four. It all depends. You got to look and see what the bedding looks like. You got to use your best judgment, you know. And this is how this is done. I'm going to put a little more in this one. It's not difficult. It's just, you know, you just got to stay on top of it. And please don't do what I do with the stupid dates. <laughs> oh, it's a perfect day to bake bread. But I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm sure Joe will love that. Joe loves my cooking. He knows I've been a cook for years when I met him. And he's like, bonus. So that's how this works. So when I make up fresh bedding, um, I'll bring you back. Well, guys, I did a little sweeping. So now I'm going to officially take my break and go eat lunch. So I hope you guys understand what a starter bin is. A starter bin is going to be the substrate that they live in. Like I grab it by the fistfuls and it's going to have worms in it, baby worms, cocoons, just all the microbial life that lives in a worm bin. Um, it just, it's different from buying worms, you know, pure worms by the pound without cocoons and all that included. That's why I'm able to sell it um, cheaper, you know, but you have to give it a chance to, to like activate itself in your bin that's why you have to dump it in your bin and wet it down with water real well and just be patient and give it time 
because those cocoons need time to hatch. And before you know it, there's going to be like a lot of signs of life. Um, and there might, there's, there's going to be worms in there. I just never know how many, because since I grab it by the fistful, it just goes. And, you know, I don't know. I can't really tell you how many, but that's what a starter colony is. And, um, it's just an, an easier way to just get things going. Anyway, I just wanted to explain that to you. Well, guys, I just finished going live with you. I absolutely loved it. It was fun. I had never done it from my phone. So I'm really excited that I was able to do that and we'll do it more often and we'll do it also like on the weekend. So people are home from work and could could uh, watch and, you know, get get uh, to see more things here. So go ahead and subscribe and find my other channel, The Composting Warm Lady. Today is Friday. It is very stormy here in Indiana and I've lost my TV. So anyway, um, if you want worms, just hit up my website and I ship them out on Tuesdays and take care and I'll see you next time. So look how they're doing. These are the Cuban peppers that I have trouble with all the time. There they are. These are some little marigolds. It's another Cuban pepper or, yep, it is. And look at my tomatoes. They're starting to get big. And this is my blend that I made with castings mixed in. You can't beat the stuff, guys. Another Cuban pepper, another Cuban pepper. Anyway, I wanted to show you. I told you I'd give you a peek. And uh, oh my gosh, keep your fingers crossed.